Um, so I'm James Tusserone. I manage the University Beadwork Calendar, the Yale Calendar of Events at calendar.yale.edu, which is what we'll be talking about, uh, among a few other things as well. I'm also here to plug all of my other services. So, uh, so uh, does everybody here, or does anybody here, already use the Beadwork Calendar? Wonderful, wonderful. Good to hear. All right. Um, so, to kind of get us started, um, to go with our theme of storytelling, um, you know, I, I think it can really kind of be expressed that events can be considered sort of the building blocks of a story, right? Um, they help us to to better publicize and recollect, you know, things that have happened or things that are going to happen, and help us to provide a story to the community or to the people who we are trying to reach to our audience. And um, one of the great things about the beadwork system is it's so flexible, and it really allows us to have a number of different groups maintaining events on the calendar, and we can actually both import to the beadwork calendar and export from the beadwork calendar as well. So the beadwork calendar is managed through Central IT. Uh, so we're in Central IT under Campus Community Technologies. Our group is called Shared Application Services, and for those of you who've been with us for a longer period of time, you may remember us as calendar and event management. And uh, Jeff Campbell here, I'll point him out as well, is actually the service owner. Uh, so he is ultimately responsible for any troubles that you guys may have. Um, and this is, this is just a, a quick look at our actual beadwork calendar. This is calendar.yale.edu. This is the first thing that people will see when they log in or, or navigate to this page. Uh, you can see we have our event list on the right hand side. It's filtered, about, or it's rather, it's listed by day. Uh, so it'll start off with whatever day today is here, and then moving forward, you know, past those dates to the next ones that's available. Uh, we also have a global set of tags that are available. Uh, the one that was, is immediately visible is the event format, which provides us things such as the type of event, the, the type of event that it is. Uh, so if it is, say, an exhibition or a performance, a talk and lecture, conference meeting or seminar etc and uh, we also have the ability to filter or provide tagging around event category which is more so along the lines of say like arts and sciences or humanities or you know law or something like that we also have open to which is your intended audience uh, so that might be the Yale community the general public it might be limited to a specific age group uh, etc and then listed by is where we actually have the powerful ability to identify a specific group that's going to be listing your event. Uh, so this way here, even though it's a, it's a global aggregated calendar or a unified calendar, uh, you still have the ability to say, hey, it's our group that owns this event. So, so people know that you know, it's, it's you. And in many cases, that is something very important because people do want to maintain that visibility uh, within their events so that people know that, yeah, you know, this, this event is associated with our group. One of the great things about the beadwork calendar is it is incredibly visible. Uh, so from Yale.edu, you can actually see the very first link on the page is to the calendars page. And if you navigate to that calendars page, the Yale calendar of events is the first link on the page. So if you're really looking to get your events visible to not only the Yale community, but the general public, this is a powerful, powerful vehicle to move those events forward. Because this is where most people are going to go when they're looking for what's taking place around the Yale campus. And this is a sample event on the beadwork interface with a list of, of all of the currently available fields um, that we have configured. So it might be a little small for, for those of you in the back, but we have the ability to configure a date, and those can be single dates or recurring dates, and the recurring dates can be in, in a number of different patterns or just kind of individual dates. We have addresses that are built into the system. Uh, so if there isn't an address that already exists, we can add it for you. But the addresses are pre-populated into the system um, in order for us to maintain some sort of uniformity and in, in order um, to enable us to export this data to other systems. You can also customize up to three custom URLs to bring your users or the, the visitors out to other websites. So maybe you have a website where you have additional information or, um, or maybe you have a a sponsor or something like that that you want to call out right up here at the top, you're able to include those here. And you're actually able to customize the URL label as well. So you can say, you know, this is a link to, you know, uh, Four Kitchens, or this is a link to, you know, Yale Hospitality, or, or basically anything that you want. We also have the ability to call out specifically speakers and performers. Uh, the we have a description field which goes up to about 5,000 characters, so you have a really extensive uh, area for you to be able to add a lot of description about your events. And then some of these are a little um, 
less frequently used. They're kind of um, intended or, or requested by, by some of our more um, one-off groups, if you will. But so in this case here, you can see we have a name and a link available for sponsors. Uh, we can include production credits. Uh, we also are able to identify admissions, if that's the case. Many events are typically going to be free, uh, which still will allow you to add a registration URL if, or details if you so desire. Uh, but we also have free and re but register in advance so that a registration is required. And you would provide a registration URL that a user can go ahead and register for your event. We also have a paid event, so there's a cost associated with it. You can identify the cost on here and then again provide the, the link for the user to go ahead and register for the event. And then of course we have our contacts as well. And with the contacts, again, those are going to be um, pre-configured in the system, so we would just add those ahead of time so that they are, again, uniform when we're exporting out of the system. And down here at the bottom is where we're able to see those, those tags that we were just talking about before. Uh, so in this case, we only have one, and it's the university events, which would be a um, event category. Excuse me, you know, it would be an event format. Uh, but if I had any other tags associated with this, this is where they would show up. And right down at the bottom, you can see this is the listed by information. So in this case, I've listed this event by the Center for International and Professional Experience. Um, this is not their event, but they actually do not use this calendar currently, so I pick on them a lot. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is a sample event with, with everything, and you can also see we're able to configure an image here as well. Uh, Beadwork does not store any images, so all of your images do need to be stored externally on a publicly available server. Uh, in, the, in most cases, we suggest that people either use an existing Drupal site that they already have so that your image maintains your site's um, domain, or if you do not maintain a site, uh, Box is also suitable as well. So you can store the images in Box and publicly share them, and then you'll be able to provide that link to Beadwork to, in order to display your images. Thank you. Correct. So beadwork, yes, beadwork cannot work with with proprietary image viewers. And in the case of bead, or excuse me, in the case of Google, Google Drive, they do display their images in a proprietary image viewer, uh, which Google, or excuse me, beadwork cannot accommodate. That having been said, there is also two ways to display your and share your images within Box. One of them does use a proprietary image viewer, and another does not. So if you're anybody that's using the calendar ever runs into that issue, feel free to let us know, and we can kind of guide you through the correct mechanism within Box to be able to allow your images to be visible here. And uh, so yeah, so again, really, you know, the, the great thing about the beadwork calendar is that it, it really gives us an opportunity to become a part of President Salovey's vision for a unified university. Uh, it, it allows us to have a single unified event hub of everything that's happening at Yale. And previously, and still sort of currently, you know, where we're in a, in a predicament where many groups maintain their events on separate, independent, individual sites or different locations. And then if, if a general person that's not a member of the Yale community, and even some members of the Yale community who may not know where to look for your events, don't know about all these individual sites or have to really, you know, spend all, you know, so much extra time just trying to be like, well, where do I go for, you know, the School of Management's events? You know, I mean, it, it becomes, detrimental to your user and and you know and, and it, it makes them have to do more work and become frustrated when now we can have everything in a single place and the more that we the more adoption that we get of this calendar the more powerful that this calendar will become hey uh, so now one good thing to know about this is that the look and feel of the calendar is managed by OPAC. OPAC is still going to be considered the functional owner of the beadwork calendar. Um, so they do have functional control over the calendar. That having been said, administrative, con administrative control of individual events will remain with the group that published them to the calendar. So if your group published an event to the calendar, you own that event, you will continue to manage that event, and nobody's going to take that event away from you. OPAC would, will only be modifying those events for minor spelling errors, things of that nature, just to make sure that the public facing view of the calendar is appropriate for the public to represent Yale. And any larger changes that may need to be made or concerns that OPEC may have about events would always be discussed with the group that owns the event and they wouldn't just, you know, sort of take over, you know, oversight of that event and, and take it out of your hands. Uh, along with that, we also have the ability to configure different levels of, of access to the system. And you had a question? Um, 
I would say that that's definitely a discussion that you would likely have with them. Uh, so they do control the triptych on the, on the site here. Uh, so the triptych is, let's get back here. So the triptych is the three sponsored images or the three featured images that exist on the top of the beadwork page. They will typically select those just arbitrarily. Um, I'm not, I really cannot speak to the, any process that they might have of publicizing these events through their social media, uh, but certainly um, we can facilitate a conversation between you and the person who oversees the calendar, and I'm sure that they would be able to, to work with you on, on, on accommodating that in some way. Yeah. Uh, who is it? Uh, so, so Andrea McAdam is, is officially, I would say, the functional owner, uh, but we also work with uh, Lena Pritchard uh, very closely, and, and she, I believe, is sort of the day-to-day -day manager of the calendar. And so again, so we do have a couple of different levels of access to the calendar. So we have our administrators and our approvers who are going to be, you know, the people who, who really control your individual calendar group. And they can go ahead and add events, modify events. They can um, publish, uh, excuse me, publish their events. And they also have the ability to approve events that have been submitted by other users. Uh, so that leads us to the open submission client, which is open to anybody with a net ID, an active net ID and password. The open submission client is optional. You can use it if it's something that would be useful for you. It's not something that needs to be used. Uh, but in this case here, you would be able to allow somebody that is not an administrative user of the calendar to submit an event and then one of your approvers can review that and decide whether or not they would want to include it on the calendar. Now one of the really, really great things and really exciting things about this calendar is we have this event sharing idea between groups. Now, for anybody who may have, again, used the calendar prior to the upgrade last year, uh, you may remember the idea of affiliate calendars. And so the event sharing sort of replaces that behavior of affiliate, ca affiliate calendars and allows you to share events between groups uh, in order to avoid duplication of events and, and also to show that there are potentially more than one group that's either listing the event or associated with the event or, or sponsoring the event or in some way of other way involved. So, whoops. And the last thing that I want to mention about the beadwork calendar is coming soon, we will actually be able to provide free event registration through the calendar. Uh, so what this means is that when you add an event to the calendar, you'll be able to identify whether or not it's an event that allows for registration. You can identify a maximum capacity. Uh, you can also uh, send out some emails. You can have a wait list if, uh, if your event becomes full. And then you can continue to communicate with your users through the beadwork uh, interface. Yes, and we'll talk about event management in a little while as well. So currently we have over 80 groups that are using the beadwork calendar. Uh, so OPAC, again, is one of our, one of our primary stakeholders. Uh, we also have Yale College. We have Yale Arts, which is another really, really big user. And the arts calendar, which many of you may or may not be familiar or frustrated with, actually pulls all of their data from beadwork. So the application itself is not a beadwork application, but every single piece of data that goes through that application actually comes through beadwork. got many of the schools around campus and so again all of these groups that are listed here all of their events are aggregated onto a single page within the uh, within the calendar and people can go to one place to see everything that's taking place and so I wanted to kind of go into event suggestion a little bit in a little bit more detail because I know that that is something that is again it's really useful tool it's one of the most powerful things about the calendar but it's also sort of one of the more 
slightly confusing things about the calendar. So event suggestion is, is what allows you to basically list multiple listed by groups on the calendar. And for that, we have, this is the listed by groups here. So basically sharing events allows you to have an event appear for any number of these groups. And so over here, you can actually see that we've applied a filter here for both the Office of Public Affairs and also for Yale Arts. So all of the events that are listed here are actually tagged by both the Office of, uh, or by OPAC and by Yale Arts. So basically what happens is that, you know, one calendar suite would create an event and then they would say, okay, I think that group A, B, and C are all going to be interested in this event. So I'd like to share this event with those groups. And then once those groups accept the event, it begins to become available for them under that listed by filter. And again, as I mentioned, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the older version of the calendar, this replaced the idea of affiliate calendar suites. And this is just an example of how we would go ahead and set that up. Uh, so this isn't an actual, I don't have my full event form here, but this is sort of the, the initial first couple of fields that are required when you're creating an event. Uh, but what's really interesting is that here's our section for suggestion. And you can see basically every single group that has a calendar uh, in beadwork has an option here. And you can just go through and you select whichever ones you think would be interested in your event and or interested in also being associated with the listing for this event. And then once you select those and, submit and uh, save the form, they'll get a little notification that says, you have an event that was suggested to you. And from the main menu, uh, we have a suggestion queue. And then we can view that by su you know, suggested events, accepted or rejected events. And it's basically just as simple as saying, I accept or reject the event. And then once you've done that, it'll also appear on your calendar. If you're exporting data from Beadwork to a custom application or to a, a custom website, it'll actually appear in that data feed for you as well. And it'll show up in you know, whatever source it is that you are pulling this data to. And that leads us to the idea of customizations and integrations with the system. So Beadwork out of the box has a very close integration with Yale Sites. Uh, there's a module that's available that will actually also be updating at some point, I would say over the next um, maybe 12 to 18 months, that w allows you to basically turn it on, put in a URL, and you're pulling in your events from Beadwork to your website. And it'll, out of the box, already have your sites current theme or, or styling. And there isn't really much else you need to do unless you'd like to get some, you know, some additional customization. Uh, so again, you're able to display the events specific to your group or site. So we have a lot of filtering capabilities. Um, even if you wanted to display events from other groups on your site, you can certainly do that. Or if you only wanted to, let's say, display academic events and you have you know, events that are tagged with just academic events, you can pull in just those academic events rather than everything that you're listing. Uh, we also have the ability, as I said, to customize look and feel so that you're not um, restricted to what OPAC has designed for, for the actual interface. And then for those of you who are maybe using a custom application that isn't you know, a website, uh, we are also able to accommodate that as well, of course, with, them, with some custom development. We can certainly provide you uh, with that data. And that's exactly what we're doing with the Art Calendar. Uh, they are a Ruby application uh, where we've done some custom uh, design and development that allows them to pull the data and then consume the data into their, into their application. And here is an example of a custom website. Uh, so this is the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. And you can see uh, this is obviously much, much different from what you would see on the calendar of events. Uh, but they're able to pull in their events and automatically have their events be styled with the way that it matches their website. And I just call them out because they do have such a, a custom site and it looks so you know, typically different than, than most other sites. And then uh, we also have the Yale Arts Calendar. So, so this is an application, not a website, although it is a web application. And again, it's very custom what they do here and, and all of this data is pulled from beadwork. Uh, none of it is stored within the Arts Calendar. So I'm gonna pause there. That's what I have for beadwork. And, uh, and see if anybody has any other questions. Uh, so really, it's, I'm just trying to give you guys a, a brief overview of, of what we can do for you. So now I'll move on to my shameless plugs. And uh, so we manage a number of other applications within shared application services. Um, along the event management line, we have Cvent. And Cvent, this is actually not my stuff. This is I copied right from Cvent's website because you know, this wasn't the bulk of the presentation. So, so CVent meetings and events don't, or great meetings and events don't just happen. It takes good planning and it takes the right tools, which in this case would be CVent. So the CVent platform, it automates and simplifies planning process. It saves you time and money, increases attendance, delights your attendees, 
that they even have something called white glove service and uh, and, it, and it adds and improves values to your value to your events this is just a, a sort of brief, brief overview of all of the things that they that they provide or that they can provide uh, as part of the application. Uh, so they have great analytics, and obviously they have some some management capabilities. Here it says meeting management, but let's call it session management instead. Uh, we also have venue sourcing. We have marketing. We have social media. Uh, we have registration. While we're not using it very much here on campus, we do also have the ability to integrate with housing and travel uh, so that we can actually control even that extent of the events. Uh, we have on-site solutions, which leads, which is um, right along those lines of the white glove service. People from Seven will actually come down here and handle your entire check-in and registration process. And then we have also a mobile app, which is what's really, really fun. Uh, so we have Crowd Compass, which we do have some users of Crowd Compass here, I know. Uh, and this is basically can be used with Cvent or it can also be used independently of Cvent. But it's basically a mobile application um, for for an event. Uh, I, I really wish that we would have had one set up for this for this um, uh, digital conference. Uh, however, it was uh, it was just not. Um, we weren't able to build it out quickly enough with the amount of time that we had. Um, or rather with the amount of resource that was available from the from the Yale sites team. Um, but it is a very quick and easy um, tool. I think, right, Blaze, you use this very, very frequently and it's, it's very user friendly, doesn't really take that much time, right? And what I loved is, you know, they say on average, people that are attending a conference are checking their phones 200 times a day. So, I mean, why don't we leverage that, that power of, of these devices that people have in their hands all day long and use it to really provide additional information about these, about these events? You know, and we can see that we have so many things that we can provide to them, right? So it's a really great tool for, for um, there we go. Instead of a schedule in a hand, you have a schedule on your device and you can actually say I'm going to attend this session or I, I'm interested in these multiple sessions. We can provide maps. If something changes, a session was canceled, you can actually do a push notification out to the phone and they'll get and it'll say like, hey, this was canceled or you know what, there was a flood in you know, the first floor. We're going to be at you know, the School of Management today instead of at Kroon Hall. Um, so, you know, and it fosters engagement by allowing you to connect with your peers uh, because it is, you know, sort of a, a social networking tool and also with content that you're trying to provide to the group. And it also really gives you a powerful, um, a powerful tool to present your brand to, to these people. And then, of course, as with almost everything out there, right, we have some powerful abilities for reporting, tracking and analyzing data. And in this case, in real time. So I'll stop there for our two event management tools and see if anybody has any questions on Cvent or Crowd Compass. All right, so then I'm going to move on to my last service, which for me today is one of my most exciting. Uh, so we also manage the room reservation system. Uh, many of you may have already interacted with it, may manage space within it. Uh, we do have two room reservation systems on campus. Uh, we have 25 Live, which um, grew out of R25, is pre uh, predominantly used by undergraduate and by the registrar's office. And we manage EMS, which stands for Event Management System. It's branded here at Yale as the Room Reservation System, or RRS. Uh, it allows an integration with Banner, uh, so we can pull down uh, course data and publish that within the system. Uh, it allows for optimization within Banner, some uh, course scheduling, and also some final exam scheduling. Uh, it allows for some flexible configuration options. So it can be used to book spaces. It can be used to book uh, tours. It can be used to book people, potentially. I mean, really, it, it allows us an opportunity to think out of, outside of the box. Uh, we're not limited to just booking actual physical spaces, but, but really so many other things. And we have the ability for both online requests uh, and self-service online requests. Uh, so the online requests, or excuse me, online self-service reservations. Uh, so the online requests will require an administrator's approval, whereas the self-service requests just are, you know, one and done. We have different types of views uh, for the events that are taking place within the system. So we have daily, weekly, and monthly calendar views that are uh, either just visible to your, to your users or we can make them largely more visible. 
Uh, we also have many, many, many reporting options. Uh, we have some pre-configured reports and some custom reports. And then we also are rolling out our digital room signage, which is what I really wanted to show you all. Uh, so, so these are some devices that integrate with the system and they are installed outside of your rooms and they give you a list or, or an overview of what's taking place in the space. So in this case here, this is actually um, pointing to one of our just test rooms, uh, but you can see it's green right now, both on the sides and on the banner because the room is available. Uh, if I was to make a reservation here, the banner would turn red as well as the lights along the side so that somebody visually would automatically know whether or not the space was available. What's really great too is that a user can actually just click at a time slot anywhere on the screen and they can go ahead and make a reservation right from, from the device. And we'll go ahead and make one right now and hopefully if everything is not going to make me look foolish. It'll, it'll work for us. Oh, let's. What time is that? So if we go, I think, of course. So we won't be able to see the device change colors until noon, uh, making my reservation for noon here. Uh, but we can see now that I've made a reservation at 12 and we now have the red indicator within the time bar to show us that a reservation was made. Uh, if there was you know, other reservations made throughout the day, we would be able to see those here. Oh, actually, it decided to push my reservation back to 11.45. So you are seeing the change in display here. So you can see now the room is booked. We have the red display here. The indicator lights are also red. And again, somebody just looking down the hall, looking for a, a huddle room or a meeting room would be able to see you know, a bank of these going down the hall and say, oh, that room's available. I can just go ahead and reserve the space and do what I need to do. The other great thing about having these devices installed with, with rooms is that it allows you to require check-in for your spaces. Uh, so if you have you know, a premium for your spaces where you, know, you only have so, many space, so much space, but you have many more users that want those spaces, which is often the case, um, this allows you to say, well, if somebody reserved this room, they have 10 minutes after the start of the reservation to check in or their reservation is released. And then somebody else can actually reserve the space because now it, the other person never showed up. So, so it kind of accommodates no shows so that you're continuing to be able to really optimize your use of the spaces. And then of course that just works right well hand in hand with, with the reporting, right? So it allows us to see what's taking place. And one of the really, really, really powerful powerful things about this is that once you have these reports and you have all this information, you now have an argument for why your group needs additional space, right? And you actually have it in numbers and you can go to facilities or to whomever it is that would you know, facilitate that decision making for you and say, here is exactly why we need more space. And, um, and that's really one of the secondary features of the system, but also still one of their most, it's most powerful. So just a really quick overview of that, but does anybody have any questions on the room reservation system? Well, then if everybody's sick of hearing me talk, I think that'll be it for today. Um, I'm going to leave this plugged in up here. If anybody wants to take a look on their way out or maybe you know, discuss this in a little more detail, I'm happy to, to, to stay for a few more minutes and, and uh, go over this in a little bit more. Um, otherwise, um, thank you guys so much. I hope that you got some, some useful information from this and enjoy the rest of the conference. So thank you.